Hey everybody, my name's Caleb. All you gamers out there know that cheat codes are the guides or methods that help you do things like advance to new levels, get special powers, and generally win the game faster. When you have the cheat codes, you have a shortcut to win. Like, Ty the Tasmanian Tiger. Left, right, left, right, Y, Y, B, B, Y, B. I didn't even press that right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be awesome if we had cheat codes to discovering and living God's best life for us? Some nuggets of truth that could help us live the kind of life we all want? Well, good news. There is something God gives us to help us do just that. But first, a story from my own life. There's a time back when I was in elementary school where I moved from Florida to Pennsylvania. Talk about a shock, a change, or just different schools, different people, different church, different friends. It was just all different. And there was a time when I first started at my new school where this group of kids didn't really understand me fully and they said something that we don't have to repeat, but it wasn't so much the words that stuck with me as it was the feeling that I got from hearing those words that stuck with me for a while. It made me think, Caleb, maybe you're not actually welcome here. Maybe you're not wanted here. Maybe nobody even sees or understands you. Or maybe, if forget all what they think, maybe I'm not even who I'm supposed to be. Really like crazy big things to think about, right? And maybe you've experienced something similar to that before. And if you have, then you don't need me to tell you that words have so much power. Because of that, the way we use them can have a huge impact on our relationships. The truth is, we say a lot of words every single day. Some of us may say more than others, me, I'm guilty. <laughs> but my guess would be that we don't always think through most of the words we say before actually saying them. It's easy to recognize the impact others' words have on us, but we don't often think about how our words affect others. Imagine what it would be like to hear every single word you said each day. If someone recorded all of the things you said, would you be okay if they played them back for you in front of everyone right now? I sure wouldn't. <laughs> When it comes to our words, at times, we're all guilty of not considering the impact they can have on others. We don't always treat our words like they have power, but in reality, they do. Maybe you talk differently about certain people than you talk to them. You're okay talking about someone with your friends when they're not around, but when that person walks in the room, your words change completely. Or maybe you like to make rude jokes about someone on your team or make fun of someone in your class, but you wait until there aren't any adults around to hear you do it. Maybe you're really good at saying what you don't mean or meaning what you don't say. The words that come out of your mouth may say one thing, but your tone says something completely different. Maybe you use a harsh tone with your siblings or a sarcastic tone with your teacher or even a tone with your friends that doesn't leave them feeling great. And while your words on their own aren't bad, your tone is telling everyone what you really think. Or maybe your trouble with words starts when there's an argument or a fight. Different people respond in different ways to conflict and drama, right? Some people yell, some people get quiet, some people get defensive, some blame others, some start telling everyone about the drama, some just wanna run away completely. No matter how you respond, if you're honest, you'd have to admit that when you do, you aren't always thinking about choosing your words well. No matter which category you fall into, we can all probably admit that we often use our words in ways that aren't great. We don't always consider the impact of our words on others. So the question is this, how do we change that? Like what's the cheat code to help us think about what we say before we actually say it? How can we use our words with wisdom? And the answer to that question is actually found in the question itself. It's wisdom. Wisdom is doing what's best for you and the people around you. It's not just what's right, it's what's best. It's being able to navigate all situations in a way that's good for everybody. Wisdom helps us win at life, and that makes it the cheat code to help us manage our words wisely. Thankfully, the Bible provides so much wisdom about so many things, including our words. Today, we're gonna look at a verse in a book called 
Proverbs that I think will help us think about our words in a better way. Proverbs is actually a collection of wise sayings, mostly from a guy named King Solomon. That's a fun one to say, say it with me, ready? Solomon, <laughs> who was known to be the wisest man in history. A lot of Solomon's wisdom was collected over the years to pass down to future generations, like us. When sharing wisdom specifically about our words, here's what Solomon had to say. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Okay. Let's let's do something different here. Let's start by talking about the second half of this verse. When something goes wrong in a friendship or we get in a fight with our parents or a teacher gives us a grade we don't like or a sibling breaks something in our room, how do we usually respond? With harsh words that come from anger. And when that happens, well, the situation definitely doesn't get better. In fact, those harsh words just cause more things like anger, frustration, and conflict. You return an insult with an even meaner insult. You return a rude comment with an even ruder comment. You return a small rumor with a bigger rumor. And just like that, things get messy. That's because your words can create a reaction. When we respond harshly, it's like we're using a sledgehammer. mess. <laughs> Using a sledgehammer with our words can be explosive. It can destroy, it can be chaotic, and it definitely doesn't make things better, does it? It only leaves behind a big mess. But go back to the first part of that verse with me one more time. A gentle answer turns away wrath. What exactly does that mean? Well, wrath is defined as extreme anger. That means like really upset, really mad, really hurt, and really, 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 you get the point, angry. In other words, the situation is heated. And in those moments, wisdom gives us a better way to respond. According to Solomon, a gentle word or a calm, kind, soothing word is the answer. When drama or fights or misunderstandings or hurt feelings pop up in our relationships, isn't that what we want? A way to cool it back down? A way to make things right? A way to make less of a mess with our words? Oh, you heard the word, less of a mess. A gentle word is it. When we have the wisdom to choose our words more carefully, I promise we'll leave a lot less mess in our path. See, when I use this knife, I have to use a lot of care. such a satisfying crunch. There's definitely a better way to cut. I have to pay attention, maybe not close my eyes, and be intentional with my movements. See, my movements are controlled and, and thought out. And because of that, the knife doesn't leave a bunch of destruction and mess behind. It creates a calm, clean result. Mm. And look how easy it is to eat. Now, I know it's a lot of fun to see a watermelon just get destroyed, but in real life, I would much rather eat a nicely sliced watermelon than a pile of mushy, messy watermelon. And the same is true with our words. I'd much rather speak gentle, calming words to the people around me than messy, destructive, hurtful words, because the reality is your words matter. Now. Maybe you're thinking, but what about the person who hurt me? Maybe they deserve a harsh word. And listen, I get that. Sometimes we want to stir up anger. We want to hurt the person who hurt us. But the truth is harsh words may feel like they help you gain power in that moment, but there's actually more power in a gentle response. A gentle word changes the situation. It helps you become the one who influences the rest of the conversation and the future of the relationship. Choosing a gentle response is wise and wisdom is truly powerful. So remember, your words matter. If you want the best relationships with others and the kind of life God has for you, one of the best things you can do is to choose your words wisely, which sounds great, but how are we supposed to do that? I mean, it's a lot easier said than done, but wisdom is our cheat code, right? And that means being wise with our words will help us get where we want to be in our relationships. So here are four helpful ideas that can guide us when it comes to our words. 
First, hit pause. Sometimes when you're hurt or angry, the best thing you can do is nothing at all. In the moment, try not to do anything. Pause for a few moments or minutes or hours. You might even need to walk away. A pause is a great start to choosing your words wisely. Then use statements like, I think and I feel. These are great phrases to use when talking about your feelings without making the situation worse. Saying, I think that thing you said was me feels way better than saying, you're me, doesn't it? Responding with, I feel hurt that you asked her to be your lab partner when you know I liked her is more helpful than responding with, you're a jerk, right? These are great responses to help you remember to choose gentleness when you express yourself. Next, name what's bothering you. What's the emotion you feel? Do you feel hurt, jealous, embarrassed, afraid, insecure, sad, disappointed? When you name it, you can better communicate it. Finally, stop the back and forth. When you find yourself trading harsh words back and forth with someone, just stop. Choose to end the cycle. I know these aren't easy steps to take, but imagine what our relationships would look like if we work toward responding in gentleness instead of with harsh words. Conflicts and arguments aren't going to disappear out of our lives, but the sooner we can learn to have healthier responses, the better our relationships will be because your words matter.